Hi everybody, this is Patrick from Travels with Delaney presenting our second video in our two-part series on boondocking basics for beginners. And remember, as I said in the first video, I'm no expert, I'm actually a beginner myself, but I'm just trying to share some of the uh, tips, tools, and techniques that we use this summer on our big trip out west to the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone. Um, and I'm also gonna share with you some changes we're gonna be making for, before next summer's big trip to the Pacific Northwest. When we talk about electrical systems with boondocking, um, we know that most trailers come with a 12 volt battery and that 12 volt battery will actually operate things like the lights in your trailer, um, maybe the radio in your trailer, um, the furnace will still operate, the refrigerator will still operate on propane, but you're somewhat limited. But you do have some basic functionality in your trailer operating off that one 12 volt battery. Now what I did this summer was I actually carried a second 12 volt battery in the outdoor storage. Now, if you're wondering why I just didn't hook it up in parallel with the other 12 volt battery that's mounted on the front of the trailer, the main reason is, is with our Hummingbird 16FD, there's not actually room to mount a second battery without uh, modifying the front. And I decided I didn't want to do that because our plans are next spring, we're going to actually replace those two 12 volt batteries with two 6 volt um, batteries. Uh, basically a golf cart cut style battery and the reason we're going to do that is what well, everything that I've seen on YouTube and read online is that number one those golf cart batteries have a lot more amp hours and it's the amp hours that will determine how long your batteries will run before they actually will need to be recharged and so you can actually get more out of two 6 volt batteries you're still on a 12 volt system um, but a lot more usage time so we used our batteries. We also, there were t a few times where um, the batteries, we needed more um, than just the batteries. And so when we wanted to do things like run our AC, um, utilize the microwave, or in the mornings if my wife wanted to use the hair dryer to dry her hair, then we were forced to look at another source of electrical power. In that case, we actually used our generator. The uh, generator that we actually have is the Generac IX2000. Now, I bought this last summer at Costco for um, under $400. Just so you know, Generac makes the same exact generator, but it's the IQ2000, and the Q stands for quiet. It's a little bit quieter than this one, but it was also about twice the price. This, this generator, even though the Hondas are amazing and, and when we've been in campground, uh, campgrounds where the Hondas are running, they definitely are quieter, but they were approximately three times the price of this particular model. So um, let's go ahead and take a listen. I'm gonna fire the generator up, take a listen, and you're gonna hear it running on eco mode, then you're gonna run it on high mode, and then I'm actually gonna turn our AC on. Now a lot of people will tell you you can't run your AC on a 2000 watt generator. But we actually have found that if we minimize all the other devices in the trailer, basically shut just about everything else off, we can actually run with no issues our AC. Now we don't run it for long periods of time. We just run it, for instance, we get back from Yellowstone and if the trailer was a little warm, we'd, we'd fire it up for maybe 15 or 20 minutes just to get some of that warm air out of the trailer. So we're not looking to run it all, all night long or anything like that because as you'll find in most campgrounds or even if you're out boondocking, you're probably not gonna be able to run your generator all night long. At Coulter Bay, I believe the hours were from eight in the morning till eight at night that you could actually run your generators if you were in a generator loop. So we didn't run it a whole lot while we were there, but there were a few times we wanted to. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the generator actually running. So you could tell that when I first fired it up and it was on eco mode, um, it was a little bit quieter. And then when I turned it on to the high setting, um, it was a little bit louder. But you could definitely hear it kick in when that AC and especially the compressor came on. But overall, this generator has worked really well for us. Now, I actually found a case that was meant for a, some type of grill. I found it at a Gander Mountain that was going out of business and actually ended up picking it up for around $20. And so what we do is we actually put our generator in that, that real nice padded case and I zip it up after it's completely cooled and that's how we travel with it. We actually keep it in the case in the back of our Forerunner. Again, I don't put it in until um, typically the next morning. I want all those gas fumes out and then I have it in the case. Um, and sometimes we even crack the windows just on the safe side. 
So the other thing that we use with our batteries, we had to have a way to charge our batteries. Now the Hummingbird 16FD, as with all the Hummingbirds, comes pre-wired with the solar on the go. And that means you can actually get a connector that just plugs directly in. The solar panels that I are using were the ones that I picked up last year at Harbor Freight. Now this is a 45 watt kit. Um, when it comes, it actually comes as a complete frame that you put together and then it's one big frame. And originally last summer we were towing with my Toyota Tundra, but once I traded that in, I lost a lot of cargo space and I had to find a way that I could actually still take these big panels on our trip. And so what I ended up doing was modifying the frame, cutting it apart so that I can take these as three individual panels storing them and I actually just made some case cases for them out of Reflectix which you can find at your local hardware store and so they just slip in there it's almost like a bubble wrap um, and it protects them and I just stack them right in the outdoor storage area so again this is three 15 watt panels now this isn't going to give this is not going to work if you wanted to uh, be constantly using um, your batteries during the day so what we pr primarily use these for was we would be gone all day, for instance, in Yellowstone, and I would have these hooked up, and what they would do is they would bring our battery back up to full, and so when we'd ride back at five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening, our batteries were completely full, and then we could go all evening um, into the next morning and still have, uh, many times we were still at two-thirds, sometimes we'd drip, dip down to one-third battery on our indicator, and then we would hook up the solar panels the next morning and it'd bring it back up. Now, long term, I told you I want to eventually switch out those two 12-volt batteries with two 6-volt batteries mounted on the front in parallel. Um, another upgrade I'm going to make before we go to the Pacific Northwest is I'm going to upgrade our solar panels. Even though these did the trick for us the past two summers, they're too big, they're too bulky, and honestly, they're, they're kind of a pain to put together. So I'm gonna be looking at one of the um, either ZAMP or Renology type uh, briefcase solar panels they fold up like a briefcase they come with a nice carrying case and they're just so much easier to work with um, it has the controller built right in and i'm probably going to be looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 80 watts the next time just so we have a little bit more um, in terms of what's going into our batteries to ensure that they're always full um, after a day of charging so that's going to be another upgrade now what we did, if you're asking like, what did you use your battery for all night long that was draining your batteries? Well, that's a good question. Number one, um, we used our fantastic fan in the evenings to get airflow. And what I have found is on the 112 volt battery, we could run our fantastic fan all night long and not drain our batteries. Uh, the second thing that we used was we would plug in a little inverter that I have into the cigarette plug above our TV. And then we plugged in a little fan. It was. Um, it was just a little fan that I ended up mounting um, above our TV in our bedroom. And so if we wanted direct fan, um, we would turn that on. And again, we ran that all night long and, and still had plenty of battery the next morning. So the third upgrade that I wanna make before we head out next summer um, is in addition to the two six volt batteries, in addition to the uh, suitcase style, uh, larger um, um, solar panel, um, I want to install a 2000 watt inverter. And the reason I want that big of an inverter in the trailer is I want to, number one, be able to run my wife's hair dryer so that she can dry her hair in the mornings without firing up the generator. And number two, I want to be able to utilize the microwave for very brief periods, meaning if we have meat that's frozen and we want to defrost it to be able to just plug in the microwave into the inverter, use it for maybe a five to seven minute period to defrost some meat and shut it down. Or in the mornings if we wanna heat up a, a muffin or something like that. And so the inverter that I'm actually looking at uh, is a Harbor Freight product. It's around $170. And I think that should work pretty well in terms of giving us the, the power supply that we need. And again, we're not looking for long because remember, if you plug something in and you're drawing juice, it's gonna start sucking out of your batteries. So we want to use those types of items sparingly and we will still be carrying the generator um, if we want to use it. So that gives you a little um, idea on what we wanna do in the future with our electrical systems for boondocking. So hopefully that gives you a little more information. And now as far as recommendations, I really like this Generac um, uh, generator. I've been very happy with the price. I don't know that I would do it differently. 
Um, the only real downside I have found, and I think this is probably true with most generators, is it doesn't hold a lot of gas. And so the one night at Coulter Bay, we ran out and, and then we had to run up and luckily there was a gas station nearby we could fill it up. But um, I do like the Champion has a dual fuel so it can run off propane. That's one that in the future I might look at, but that's not an immediate upgrade for us. So I really like that. As far as the solar kit, I can tell you that Harbor Freight is now selling a larger solar kit. Um, it actually comes with four 25 watt panels. So it's 100 watts, so it's significantly bigger, but it is one more panel and it's really big and bulky. And so um, even though I could probably pick that up on one of their sales for around 150 or $160, this time I'm gonna invest that much plus more to get that smaller uh, briefcase style that I think just long-term will work better for us, especially in a trailer this size. So. Hopefully that information helps you. Here's what I say is if you're wondering like, how long will my batteries last? What can I run with my batteries? Test it, test before you go. And that's really what I did last summer before we headed out for the big trip. I had my complimentary multimeter tester that I got with my coupon from Harbor Freight. And I would just come out periodically, I'd run a test on the battery, see what it was reading. And then I'd go in the trailer. And for instance, I'd turn the fantastic fan on medium and run it for four hours. And then I'd come back out and test my battery again to see how much had we lost. Same way with my solar panels. I would test uh, what's the battery at? I plug the solar panel in for three or four hours when it was sunny out, come back out and test. And really that's the easiest way is just start testing it yourself. Find out what will run off of your, if you have a small inverter that you can plug in in the trailer like we do and see if you can run those devices. Um, ultimately, sometimes it's a little scary thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go camping and I have no electricity. But the truth is you can survive with your batteries and if you start adding devices like a generator and solar panels, ultimately you will be self-sufficient um, for several days if you do not have those hookups. And again, we love boondocking because better sites and a lot less money with better views. Hopefully this information was helpful. If it was, please give us a, a like or a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We have lots of videos on our channel ranging from our Going West series from this summer where you'll see some of these things in action, our Going East trip at the end of the summer, and coming up in October, we'll be taking a long weekend fall foliage trip. So we hope you'll join us and come along. Um, liking our videos, sharing our videos always helps us out. You can also find Travels with Delaney now on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So until next time, we'll see everybody on down the road. Good night.